But first to the leader of the opposition, Peter Dutton, who joins us from Canberra. Peter Dutton, welcome. Um, John Howard, he took a proposal Thanks, to recognise Aboriginal people in the preamble to the Constitution back in 1999. Now, that referendum then failed to get any more than 40% of the vote. It got no one state to support it either. 24 years on, Prime Minister Albanese's attempt on the weekend, well, that has fail, failed by a similar margin. And again, not one state supported it. Now, the voice was a whole lot more than just recognition in the Constitution. I think we can agree on that. But doesn't this say that Australians don't support this push at all? Well, Peter, I think the Australian public's uh, delivered a very clear verdict, and I think the Prime Minister should listen to that. Uh, he apologised in question time today, and obviously he's been completely and utterly focused on the voice over the course of the last 17 months. And I think a lot of Australians are hurting because of it. They've made decisions economically in two budgets that have driven up the cost of living. So a lot of Australians are very angry about that element of it. Uh, to your point, I think uh, in part the message out of the weekend was, one, that Australians aren't opposed to uh, helping Indigenous Australians. I think most Australians instinctively want to make sure that money is being spent effectively and that the programs are being of benefit to people on the ground. Uh, secondly, I, I don't think uh, they voted against recognition. There's uh, a lot of support for recognition. I think they voted absolutely against the voice. The Prime Minister took a deliberate decision, unfortunately, from his perspective, uh, not to explain the detail. And I think Australians voted it down. And I, I just don't think he's across the detail. I think it's sloppy. Uh, I think there's an air of uh, incompetence sneaking into, uh, creeping into this government. And uh, I think that's the message that uh, that we got out of the weekend. Yeah, but John Howard's uh, motion in 1999, its referendum then, there was no mention of a voice. It failed by a similar margin. This one's failed. You currently have on the table uh, the idea that at, uh, at the next election, if you're elected Prime Minister, you're going to put the same sort of question on referendum, uh, on rec recognition, I'm sorry, to the Australian people. Is that going to change out of the result on Saturday night? There, there is a policy that we've taken to each election, including the last election, uh, which said that we wanted to recognise Indigenous Australians. Now, I've also been very clear uh, that we don't proceed with that uh, until we know that there is support, bipartisan support, support from Indigenous leaders. And I think, to be honest, uh, there's fatigue well and truly for referendums. So I don't think there's anything in the mm. near term, but I do think uh, as a policy, it's important to point out we've taken it to subsequent elections. We took it to the last election. It remains our policy. Uh, but I make this important point. Uh, as I announced on Saturday night, uh, Jacinta and Karen uh, will lead a process for us to review our policies, uh, to call out the, the rorts and rip-offs uh, within some of the programs, money that's not being spent where it should. All right, the Prime Minister said uh, the first statement he really made after he won the election was that he was committed to the Uluru Statement in full. I note the Deputy Prime Minister, Richard Miles, has said that hasn't changed that's still Labor's view, so it's a voice treaty truth. Here's the Prime Minister on the question of a treaty today in question time. Is the Prime Minister committed to Makarata truth-telling and treaty? What I'm committed to post the referendum is respecting what Indigenous people have said. Now, the voice uh, was with constitutional recognition uh, was important. Uh, Makarata is simply a uh, you'll new word for coming together after struggle. I think it's a good thing that people come together. Um, and I made that very clear on Saturday night that that is my position. Well, Peter Dutton, just like the voice was a lot more than recognition, uh, Makarata is a lot more than just coming together. Surely the PM has, has got to call this dead now. Well, I mean, surely he does. Uh, he committed uh, 34 times to the Uluru Statement in full. He made it clear to the Australian public that that's uh, what he had in mind. Uh, voice was the first step. Now, I mean, you raised the issue of questions uh, uh, asked and, and answers given. Uh, I think the Australian public gave a pretty clear answer to the question uh, on Saturday whether they supported uh, voice treaty, uh, treaty truth-telling Makarata, I think they, I think the Prime Minister would be pretty keen uh, to reject 
the Australian public's view from the weekend. Uh, the treaty talks about a process that can go on for a couple of decades at a cost of literally billions of dollars. Uh, the reparations, uh, which is a significant part of uh, what we're talking about as well, I mean, potentially tens of billions yeah. of dollars. You've seen the, uh, the truth-telling, the treaty uh, stuff in Queensland. Uh, the Premier there is talking about literally hundreds of millions of dollars uh, just in relation to one element of it, and it's not even started yet. So if that's the case just in Queensland, multiply that across the Commonwealth over decades, you may well be talking about tens of billions of dollars. And the Prime Minister couldn't rule it out. In fact, he just couldn't give a straight answer today. Now, this is going to cause him grief because he's given a private and a public commitment to uh, Marcia Langton and Noel Pearson and others uh, that he will commit to uh, the Uluru Statement in full. And I think this is why many of the Indigenous leaders are angry at the Prime Minister at the moment, uh, because he says different things in different forums. Uh, he says one thing in a meeting and gets outside, does a press conference says the opposite. So I, I think a lot of Indigenous leaders will be saying, hang on, you signed up to the whole thing and now you're walking away from it. What about voices per se? You know, you, uh, there was talk on your side of politics that there'd be some um, open door to local or regional voices or perhaps legislated voices, as has been talked about in the past. I mean, given the emphatic result on Saturday night, are you going to put that whole question of a coalition-supported voice of some sort into your review, and are you prepared to look at that again? Well, it, it's, it's all in for review, but my view is that the Australian public's been very clear, uh, particularly in relation to, obviously, a, a voice enshrined in the Constitution. Uh, now, if the Prime Minister wants to go to the next election seeking a mandate for Makarata, for truth-telling, uh, for everything else that goes with it at the cost of tens of billions of dollars, uh, then that'll be a decision he'll have to make. Uh, whether he proposes to put uh, the voice into legislation, let's wait and see. Uh, it wasn't a recommendation of the Carmel Langton report, as we know, uh, but the Prime Minister took that yeah. position after he, uh, I think, cowered uh, in the advice of the, uh, of the referendum working group. Uh, I, I think the Prime Minister's trying to please everybody here, uh, just telling different people different things. At some stage, he's got to reconcile uh, the commitments that he's given to the referendum working group, to Noel Pearson and... Marcia Langton and, and uh, Thomas Mayo and others uh, on the one hand and, and the Australian people on the other.